Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And I'm going to love this discussion today because we're going to be talking about things that might happen to keep you from even getting started in business or thinking, maybe it's not for me or, oh, this isn't going well and just needing a little extra support. So please join me in welcoming Brian Andreco to our program today. Welcome, Brian. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Perfect. Well, let me tell people just a little bit more about you and then we will jump into this. So Brian Andreco is guided by his one word, navigator, and his North Star is to help guide busy working professionals to just get started taking control of their lives. Brian believes that to discover happiness, we must be willing to discover ourselves first. Brian is an author, writer, podcast host, and sales mentor to B2B founders and their teams. However, his most important role and the one that gives him the most meaning is being dad to an amazing young boy. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. So welcome, Brian. How are you? I'm doing doing wonderful. Just uh I appreciate you having me on. It's uh, been a great summer, so uh, excited to chat with you and uh, you know catch up and uh, see what's going on in your world too. Great, I love it. Well, you know, I always like to ask my guests, "How is it that you got to where you are today?" So tell us a little bit more about it. Well, I you know some days I still scratch myself, like, "How did I get here?" You know, there's a, <laughs> there's been a lot of hoops to jump through and a lot of, you know, whether it's lucky breaks or you know some disciplined acts or you know, just one of those things where a long tail approach to making decisions kind of put me in the position I am, because mm-hmm, I'll tell you what, mm-hmm. it's funny when you were introing into the conversation about getting started and, you know, we don't go forward with a lot of stuff we want to do and fears kind of guide us in the wrong direction. That was kind of my life really for the first 30 years. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was really over the last, you know, 10 or 11 years where I've really honed in on this idea that I can do something different if I really want to do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, I, and that's why, you know, I do define if we're going to use kind of an identity, I used to define myself by my career, right? like this role. Mm-hmm. I, I am X job title. Exactly. And I think that's how a lot of folks identify themselves, mm-hmm. but it was really working with my mentor, Rich Keller, who got me to understand that it can be broader than that. It can be mm-hmm. grander. And that's where we came up with the one word as a navigator mm-hmm. and helping navigate people because throughout my life, and there's various inflection points we can get into, I always found that I love helping people mm-hmm. think differently, think outside the box, mm-hmm. find a different path around mm-hmm. things um, and kind of coach them, if you will, mm-hmm. to a different direction in life. I just didn't realize that's something I could actually do and um, enjoy doing mm-hmm. for like, not only just a, a career, quote unquote, but just in general, day in and day mm-hmm. out, think about that. I mm-hmm. thought it was just kind of, oh, you help a friend here or there. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I got to this point was, you know, tapping into a lot of those things that as a child, which I had some bad times as a child, but a lot of the good points and a lot of the things that really filled me up mm-hmm. times where I was around people and trying to help them forward mm-hmm. and then being able to leverage that to what I'm doing today. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the, I guess, the catalyst moment was figuring that out, going back and really searching mm-hmm. and discovering that, you know, I, I could actually do those things. I don't have to just have a, some general career that mm-hmm. I was told I should be in as a kid. I so love that's it. how I think about that um, in terms of where I'm at today. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, and I love the name of your company, Just Get Started, because it's, it is one of those things where we think, oh, I want to, I wish I could. But of course, the trick is, we keep thinking it has to be perfect, mm-hmm. right? So how do you work with people to get them to just get started? Well, so 
what I what I uncovered, and this is kind of going back to look at my journey, and I'll share, mm -hmm. I think, it's something that might be in, important for folks in a minute, but um, I developed what's called the Compass Framework. Mm -hmm. And what it embodies is really the steps to get started, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just share those quickly, and then maybe yep, we can Because dive. it is an acronym, so yep, we need, acronym, need the that's details. Right. That's right. So the C, you know, so it's compass, right? So mm -hmm. C is commitment, O is objective, mm -hmm. M is mindset, mm -hmm. P is priorities, A is accountability, S is support mm -hmm. or support systems, mm -hmm. and then and then the other S is start. Mm -hmm. And the reason I came up with that acronym because I look back at my life, going back to what I just mentioned, you know, prior I'm 41 mm -hmm. years old, just as context. So mm -hmm. prior, you know. 10, 11 years ago, somewhere in that time frame, where there was this like abundance of fear and self doubt mm -hmm. and complacency and not feeling I was good enough. And obviously that was well prior to that too. Mm -hmm. I started to look back of, okay, why did I change? Because it didn't happen overnight. And mm -hmm. I certainly didn't know in the moments mm -hmm. that I was changing to become this whole different person. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize that what's in that acronym is what I decided to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a commitment to change mm -hmm. um, where I find a lot of folks struggle. And, and maybe Debbie, you've, you've seen this as well, is we say we want to change. Right? right. The best analogy of this is New Year's Eve. Everyone has their. Yeah, we've got our New Year's resolution. Right. Mm -hmm. They're excited to, to show up the next mm -hmm. day. They're going to knock it out of the park. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks in, they've quit. Mm -hmm. And it's because they said I wanted to change and they had this rah, rah motivation. Right but they never made the commitment to change. And the commitment to change, and you could relate to this because you're at almost a thousand episodes of this podcast mm -hmm. with your business, you've been running for a lot of years, is you have to build systems mm -hmm. so that you can reach your goals when you're not in the discipline. Mm -hmm. it, if we show up, if it's like, oh, I want to do this, this mm -hmm. conversation today, great. When I don't feel like it, mm -hmm. when I'm not in the best move, mm -hmm. how do I show up? Mm -hmm and put in the systems in place, allow right. us to make the commitment mm -hmm. to change. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's number one on the list. Now mm -hmm. it happens to be a C, which is nice. It starts a compass, mm -hmm. but I do believe commitment is mm -hmm. the number one thing. When we make mm -hmm. the commitment to change, it can allow us to move down the path mm -hmm. up to some of the other areas. Mm -hmm. right. So that's kind of how I think about if mm -hmm. someone's looking to get started, that mm -hmm. acronym is a great mm -hmm. kind of eye opening for them to say, mm -hmm. wow, am I doing all these things mm -hmm. in my life or in a specific area mm -hmm. that I want to start in? Right. You know, and that commitment truly is the, 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 the first step. I remember, oh, it's been 32 ish years ago that I started my company mm -hmm. and I, I did it as a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of things do. And this was long before we'd ever heard of the word gig side mm -hmm. gig, any of that. It was yeah. like you said, friends would say, Hey, can you do this for me? Or I did it as a volunteer. Right. Um, and I was talking with a business person one time and, and I had a great full-time job. I loved what I was doing. I loved the people I was working with. Strangely enough, I was a lobbyist, which was a rather unusual job, right? Especially 30 years ago for a woman. Right. Um, and, but I love the people I worked with. I, I liked our clients. I really liked what I was doing, but I did feel that there was more. Um, but I met with a business coach and she told me that until I quit, that job, I would never make wise women communications work. And so, and because I didn't have to, right. You know, it was, it was kind of that, that uh, saving grace that was there. And so when I finally made that commitment and quit, that was the, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Because like I said, I liked those people and I liked what I was doing. Um, yeah. Now, sometimes we don't, we're like, Oh my God, I need out of here now. But right. even in those situations, it is very hard to to do something and, and make changes because we hate change. Yeah. When so let, let me noodle on that for a minute. That and going back the 30 years there, mm -hmm. did you quit right away or did you put a plan in place that allowed you to quit? It, I had a plan in place. And and I'll be honest, I have um and still have the same husband um who had a very good paycheck. Mm -hmm. Um and so that was one of the things. So I, you know, it wasn't like we weren't going to eat. Um, mm -hmm. We weren't going to have insurance. You know, we had all of those things in place, but it was still really scary mm -hmm. to know to maybe it was scariest to be dependent on myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, and, and to your point, 
that but that was your circumstance and this mm -hmm. is where i think a lot of folks the excuses excuses can come out where they're like mm -hmm. yeah Deb had her husband okay that's why she right. well, i need my that, paycheck i need this i need that mm -hmm. that was her mm -hmm. circumstance that, i mean that was your circumstance mm -hmm. right just like my circumstance like people always ask me they're like brian how do you get so much done i'm mm -hmm. like I'm a single dad. So mm -hmm. the weeks I have my son, mm -hmm. it's all in with him. And, right. and we, but he also goes to school during the day, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He likes to play his video games at times. Mm -hmm. There's stuff he likes to do to be independent. There's time I can get work done there. But mm -hmm. then the weeks I don't have him, mm -hmm. I can go head down. Right. You hit it hard. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where I always encourage folks, look at your current circumstance mm -hmm. and where you're at mm -hmm. and then try to work your life that mm -hmm. you want to go toward around mm -hmm. that. So right. if you have a spouse at home and you can quit mm -hmm. a job, great. Or you can mm -hmm. do a night, you know, if you, if you're not married and you're single and no mm -hmm. kids. Evenings, weekends. You could work with, yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead and do that. Then you might not be able to go watch football with your friends on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay. You might have to give that stuff up, mm -hmm. and get to a better life. Mm -hmm. Look at your circumstance and don't make excuses because other people have it a different way. Mm -hmm. right. It's just in general, right? Mm -hmm. Use what you have mm -hmm. as a catalyst to move you forward in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know, and then, of course, the next is, O oh, objective. It yeah. sounds really good to do this, but <laughs> you know, if, if you're just kind of going, it sounds really good to do this, yeah. you're not going to get anywhere. I, I, I agree. And I think objective, you know, part of the reason I wanted to put that in there was, you know, it's like a ship leaving, you know, from England going to America. Right? It's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. well. That's great in theory, but if mm -hmm. you don't have some sort of map in place and mm -hmm. you right. kind of have the navigational beacons toward there, you're going to end up, you know, in South America. Mm -hmm. So how do you get to the right spot? Well, you mm -hmm. have to have some sort of objective forward. Mm -hmm. It might not be mapped out perfectly. Right. You might know everything, but you might not know, you know, I really want, like, let's use podcasting because that's simple, mm -hmm. right? Or or even better, right? Fitness. That's something that mm -hmm. it's universally accepted. Great. I want to, you know, run this race or I want to mm -hmm. lose 50 pounds or whatever it is. Okay. What's that's your objective mm -hmm. then. And now you can start building those mm -hmm. systems in place right. to be able to reach that mm -hmm. objective. But mm -hmm. if you don't have the objective, if it's just like, I want to work out. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean? Is that an mm -hmm. hour a day? Is that 10 mm -hmm. minutes? Is that running? Right. Is that strength training? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have an idea, because if, you, if you're saying, Hey, I want to uh, train for a marathon next year, well, you're not going to power lift every day. Mm -hmm going to have to actually run and do some other right. stuff. Nutrition is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So having that objective, I think mm -hmm. can help guide us forward. And that's right. why that, oh, I think mm -hmm. is so important as a next mm -hmm. step once we make the commitment. Right. And of course it has to be a reasonable goal. Um, you know, I am a lazy slug, just putting it out there. <laughs> if I said, I want to run a marathon in six months, more than likely, that's not going to happen. Um, now, nah, you never know. I mean, you know, the, you but I bet you can do it. Oh, yeah. no, <laughs> I, I like being a lazy slug too much. Um, but, you know, if, if I said I want to be able to run a mile in 10 minutes, that really would be good for me. Um, but um, but but yeah, so then that's an achievable goal. And, you know, I think we hear a lot of business people that start and they put a, a monetary value and that's okay, but they might say, I want to be making a million dollars in a year, five years, 10 years, you know, whatever that, that might be, that could be doable or it might not be. And then of course they hit that wall and say, nope, nope, it's not, nope just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, and that also comes down to I me mean, a part of objective, especially if you look from a business sense is, is how are we going to get there? Mm -hmm. Remember, that may change over time, right? right? Maybe different income streams mm -hmm. and revenue streams that come in, and there are mm -hmm. different ways that we do it. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to get there? Because, yes, mm -hmm. it's nice pie in the sky. Oh, I mm -hmm. want to be the next Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are you going to get there? Right. And what's going to be the plan for it? Mm -hmm. So you have to have that at some point mapped out, at least where it's scratched mm -hmm. on paper and you have some idea. Because mm -hmm. then you can start putting this goes back to where we get into mindset and priorities mm -hmm. and stuff you can start putting a positive action mm -hmm. forward and prioritize the right mm -hmm. things and push away the stuff that's mm -hmm. not necessary. Mm -hmm. Because often, and this could be with anything in life, I, I, I was guilty as charged for many years, I probably still am in a lot of ways, where you're like, I'm going to do this and you're mm -hmm. focused on it. And then 10 minutes later, it's like a squirrel. squirrel oh, whip, that's me. Squirrel. Right? Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. So being focused on where mm -hmm. I want to go, well, I have to have those mm -hmm. priorities in place. Mm -hmm. 
And that could be different too. I, I want to talk in two ideas, I guess, on this. Mm -hmm. I want to think about life priorities of mm -hmm. how you structure where your time goes mm -hmm. and right. then you can get granular mm -hmm. on, okay, I'm going to take mm -hmm. one area. So let's right. use parenting as an example, mm -hmm. right? Where my son is my number one priority, mm -hmm. right? As now, it when, should be. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Now, when he's not here, remember, mm -hmm. those priorities might shift that mm -hmm. week. He's not here. It's not right. that in, in my mind, he's not number one, but mm -hmm. I can do other things mm -hmm. weeks not here. But in general, he's number one priority. So mm -hmm. I'm making decisions that lead me in a certain direction based mm -hmm. on the priority. So I have my son, then I have my health mm -hmm. and you start moving down the list, mm -hmm. right? So how do I make that decision? Well, if someone asked me to say, hey, Brian, do you want to go out this weekend and do whatever? Mm -hmm. Okay. I may do that because for me, it's about the relationships. That's mm -hmm. again, that's top of in the priority mm -hmm. list mm -hmm. down there. Um, now I might say, you know what? I'm Okay. I want to go out here because I like the people mm -hmm. that maybe are going to be in this group going mm -hmm. out or what have you. But I also might decide, you know what? My son and I have something early the mm -hmm. next morning or maybe the next week I'm doing mm -hmm. this or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. ah, not the best decision mm -hmm. for me to go out here. Right. And so I, I think too many times though, and this is, um, this is my life as a people pleaser was like, I want to do everything. Right. You, you never want to say no, never mm -hmm. want to say no. And what happens is you start getting these commitments that you mm -hmm. make of like, I have to show up here. Mm -hmm. I have to be there. I have to have this conversation mm -hmm. where I really don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think partly the priorities is to figure out where most people, mm -hmm. I don't think sit with that. I don't think they right. know what the priorities right. are. So they they have mm -hmm. their their work, you know, their mm -hmm. 4 p.m. meeting with their boss, mm -hmm. but their their son has a baseball game. Yeah. And they're like, ah, ah, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right. And instead of saying, hey, listen, I, I can't be mm -hmm. there. I really want to go support my son and asking, mm -hmm. they show up to the meeting instead. That's worthless at the mm -hmm. end. Of the right. That's the type of thing I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. so get your priorities in check. Mm -hmm. And that helps make so mm -hmm. many decisions down the line. Right. You know, and especially when you are starting your business, that was one of the things that I ha struggled with the most is, as you said, you know, trying to, to be available 24 mm seven. -hmm. And I discovered that one of the issues was that my clients thought, well, you work from home. Therefore, you should be available 24 seven, okay. um, you know, and setting those boundaries was so important to say, no, no, I, I have office hours. And, and I would tell them more than happy if something comes up evenings, weekends, holidays, but it will cost you twice as much. And then, of course, they usually discovered it could wait. Um, but then, of course, the tricky thing is sticking with those boundaries yourself, right? That email comes in at 10 o'clock at night. Right. Just take me 20 seconds to respond. And it really might only take me 20 seconds to respond. But then I just told him, it's okay to email me at 10 o'clock at night. Right. Um, so, you know, right. it's, and, and, and I had people who, well, you're home, let's go to lunch. Now, you know, it might be important for me to go to that lunch, right. but it also might be important for me to say that needs to be on a weekend, um, you know, and, and things like that. So, yeah, priorities, I think. And, and that goes along with that mindset. Um, I, you know, the same business coach, when I was very first starting out, she told me, she said, if I don't take it seriously as a business, nobody else will take it seriously right. either. Right. You're absolutely right. Well, and you hit on boundaries. I think that's such mm -hmm. a great thing to discuss because if you don't put the boundaries in mm -hmm. place, someone else will. Right. If you don't if you, so I like that the whole point of like, well, you're talking about lunches because I think it is good mm -hmm. to get out there, network and meet mm -hmm. people. But you might say, you know what? I'm going to do twice a week. I'm going to go to lunch mm -hmm. with potential colleagues. Mm -hmm. Well, once that time, those time slots mm -hmm. are filled, it's a, sorry, it's a no to right. the next. Yeah. Right. It just, mm -hmm. and you have to hold yourself accountable. It goes, mm -hmm. I know I'm getting into accountability, but like you have mm -hmm. to hold yourself accountable with those uh, boundaries because mm -hmm. we will get pulled. I like the 10 o'clock email because that's absolutely uh, right. right. We do that right. all the time. It goes ping and we're like, <laughs> right. Well, it, but again, this goes because I, I don't think I think business because ever, we like to have this like the work life balance and mm -hmm. stuff. it's all together. But that doesn't it, exist. It's all together. Right. Because at the end of the day, especially in a very connected online world. Mm -hmm your job, you might, mm -hmm. chances are it's very rare mm -hmm. to leave a job at let's say 5 PM right. mm -hmm. and not be on call. If mm -hmm. you, if mm -hmm. something happens, mm -hmm. so we have to work that into the schedule. And I think having an understanding that, all right, these are my boundaries. People know these boundaries, mm -hmm. especially if you're running your own business, people mm -hmm. know these boundaries, and then I'm going to stick with them, but it's mm -hmm. not just in business. I, I want to make this point. Mm -hmm. It's also in the health side. Right. Right. So how many people say, 
I want to get better sleep. Mm-hmm. But then they're scrolling on their phone. Right. They're on their phone at right two o'clock in the that. morning. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Those are the type of things. Again, you just got to check yourself in the mirror and say, mm-hmm. where do I want to go? Mm-hmm. And am I doing the best mm-hmm. stuff for me to get to mm-hmm. that spot? And right. if we're honest with ourselves, it's going to be a quick yes mm-hmm. or no. Mm-hmm. And then are we? And this goes back to mm-hmm. again: how do you circle back at the compass? Mm-hmm. Are you going to make a commitment to change, mm-hmm. build a better mm-hmm. system, and then move forward there? Right. You know, and there's all sorts of time management gurus and and things like that. And and so you just have to find what works for be- best for you. Yeah. I do keep a more flexible schedule. But I know people who say, you know, between nine and 10, I only do X. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what works for them. Um, I found I need to be more flexible for, you know, like we said, squirrel, right? Um, yeah. You know, as we're recording this, we're right in the middle of the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And now I knew this was coming. I had seen the schedule. Uh, my husband's cousin's wife, so whatever that relation is, okay. is uh, a Greek Olympic pole vaulter. Oh, wow. Okay. This is her fourth Olympics. So, you know, looking on the schedule, it was at now this is Eastern time, 440 AM today. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I could tape it. I could, I mean, there's all sorts of, but I thought, you know, let's just see. And dang, if I didn't wake up, I mean, I, I, you know, was, I woke up and I woke up five minutes before she was going to be on. Um, yeah. But, and so I was watching TV at five 30 this morning because I was watching her pole vault. She has qualified for the finals. Yay. Um, yeah. But I also thought I'm going to have to take a nap <laughs> later on. Yeah. So, you know, I think one of the things that we get caught up in is we make our schedules too rigid. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, and, and we don't think, well, I can add this, I can subtract this, you know, obviously there are things that cannot change. You right. have to be a certain place to pick your son up at a certain time from school. Right. You know, that is, is one of those givens. Now, is it okay? Maybe you don't have to go have ice cream with him, um, you know, or, or something like that, but, you know, know the things that you have to keep, you know, set keep those set. Then other things, okay, I can be a little flexible with this. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, I think the, the spot we get ourselves is this all or nothing mm-hmm. instead of the reality is it has to be fluid right. because we're not going to stick with it. Mm-hmm. What, th- th- goes, mm-hmm. This goes back to the uh, new year's resolution we talked about mm-hmm. because I've had folks tell me like, Oh, I'm going to go two mm-hmm. hours to the gym. I'm going to really go mm-hmm. hard and, and get in shape this right. year. And they burn out. Mm-hmm. It's like, why don't you just try to do like 10 or 15 mm-hmm. minutes the mm-hmm. first few weeks, ease into mm-hmm. this. Like, right. you know, and I've seen this, you might, you know, I, you know, on LinkedIn spending a lot of time and like, mm-hmm. I see people like they'll post their calendars and like, mm-hmm. or, or whatever, you know, you, you read blogs and it's like, okay, you have every minute of every day blocked Ugh. out. Ugh. Like, again, if that works mm-hmm. for you, awesome. Right. Me, mm-hmm. That ain't, that's not going to work. No, no. That's mm-hmm. just not how I am anyways. Mm-hmm. I, I like to move around and try mm-hmm. different stuff. Mm-hmm. But you have to put systems in place. This is mm-hmm. this is where we have to get really honest with ourselves. Mm-hmm. What do I? What does Brian need? What does Deb need? Not mm-hmm. not someone else needs. Mm-hmm. And as an example, like something I've added, I have it right up here on my my whiteboard. Mm-hmm. Is I call it the Friday free for all huh. because I get like we were talking about get distracted with stuff. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, oh, this email popped in and I got to mm-hmm. respond to this or I have to do, you know, whatever. I have to mm-hmm. update this information, whatever. So I just throw it, if it's not important and not urgent, mm-hmm. I just throw it on the Friday free-for-all. Oh, and okay. on Friday, I go and I like literally, whether, whether mm-hmm. it takes 20 minutes or an hour, whatever, I just pop through as mm-hmm. many of those on mm-hmm. the list I can. And what's interesting is two things happen. One is it wasn't urgent and I was able to mm-hmm. just accomplish it when I had the time, mm-hmm. when I put it away. And two... If I haven't got to it for a few weeks, mm-hmm. it's amazing how it just goes right. Off. It probably doesn't even need to be on the they list. Get done. So I, that was something, and maybe that's something others want to try. Now, maybe it's mm-hmm. not Friday free for all, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't have the alliteration. Maybe you do it on right. Monday or some, right. a Sunday. Or, or the last half hour of every day or sure, something. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think putting that plan in place mm-hmm. for yourself and how you work best mm-hmm. and not trying to be like, oh, this is what someone else does. I'm going to do mm-hmm. it. Try it and see if mm-hmm. it works and then mm-hmm. tweak it to your own liking. Right. right. So that's just one example of how, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. You do not want to get rigid, but mm-hmm. at the same time, we don't want to just be helter skelter mm-hmm. all day. We have to have something in place. Mm-hmm. You know, how do we work best? Right. Is good right. places. Yeah. You know, and another one of those things is that we need, and this is hard. I mean, and this is one of the hard things for me is to ask for help, right? 
Um, you know, and 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 I see so many business owners who, especially you know, when it's just them, they think I have to do it all myself. You know, mm-hmm. I own this business. Well, I'm sorry. Are you going to do your own open heart surgery? No, <laughs> you know, hopefully not. Anyway, um, you know, you're going to hire somebody, and and whether it's a VA, whether it's you know, however it works, you know, I have my producer for this podcast. Can I do everything she does? Yes, I used to, and then I went. That's not the best use of my time. Mm-hmm. She does it better and faster than I ever did. And she keeps track of everything so much better than I could because I would be going squirrel. Um, yeah. And so it's worth that. <clears throat> but I always have you know several people who keep reminding me that delegating is not a bad word yeah. and then not peering over their shoulder the whole time, right? How, how long did it take you running your business to delegate out? Do you, did you have a long period where you did it yourself? Oh, I did a lot all by myself. Um, now, you know, things like accounting, some of those things, yes, I outsourced because I, I knew I cannot, I cannot do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, now I've worked with, I think Kim and I have worked together for about six years now. So it's been uh, quite a long time. And, you know, and, and then I've added tasks to what she does. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and she and I have a, a great relationship that way. Might I need a different VA to do other things? Sure. You know, and, and that is kind of the cool thing about technology now, right? Yeah. Um, is, you know, we can hire somebody from literally around the world, depending on what it is that we need done. And the thing that I always have to remember is just because somebody else is doing it, it doesn't mean that it's not being done right. And more mm-hmm. importantly, they might do it better. Right. Yeah, I agree with you there. That was that was hard for me too because mm-hmm. I knows I wanted the control. Mm-hmm. Like, like we were talking earlier about like the video for like the podcast mm-hmm. and stuff. I have and I, I had another VA that I've kind of paused for just a little bit, mm-hmm. but I'm kind of spin that back up. But I have a, a virtual assistant that does the video editing mm-hmm. for my podcast, mm-hmm. so they'll like clip you know different shorts and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, because it's not that I can't do it. To your point, mm-hmm. you can do it, right. but the amount of time I was spending. <clears throat> Adobe Premiere, like Mm -hmm. editing the videos and stuff wasn't, I had other Mm -hmm. stuff that was more important Mm -hmm. in my eyes, Mm -hmm. but I still wanted to get it done. So I'm Mm -hmm. willing to pay them Mm -hmm. to do it. And and they Mm -hmm. do a great job, probably better, well better than Mm -hmm. I could do it with with the amount of content. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. I did that um, several years ago. I started an initiative um, based around the fact that I have cancer and I help others deal with cancer. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we started this project and, and, you know, need a website, first of all, needed branding, right. And which I do, um, needed a website. I can do that too. And then I thought about it and I thought, okay, first of all, it would never get done. Or if it got done, it'd be, you know, working it in a little bit here and there. And so I bit the bullet and I hired an absolutely phenomenal brand development guy, we worked together for you know several months developing exactly what it was that we wanted. And then I hired a website designer. Mm-hmm. And I and the funny thing was I told her, here's what I'm thinking. You know, I wanted to do this, 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 and this. She goes off, she shows it to me. It is totally different than what I had envisioned. Yeah. My first thought was, ah, that's not what I asked for. And then, of course, the wiser next thought was this is better. Um, you know, and, and so, because I could have got caught up in my ego and said, no, I told you I wanted it to look like this. And of course, you know, I looked at it and went, whoa, wow. Um, but yeah, you know, I, could I have gotten it done? Maybe to get it done the way I wanted it done. I had to have somebody else do it. Yeah. And a lot of the time that's just removing ego, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Moving ego thinking that we are Mm -hmm. the only ones that could do it. No Mm -hmm. one knows our business better than Mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Right. And I think mm-hmm. when, when we ultimately can humble ourselves a little bit and realize mm-hmm. we're not as great as we think we mm-hmm. are in some areas, mm-hmm. uh, it allows us to, again, when you remove those, it was like, I remember years ago where I, I was mowing the lawn mm-hmm. and I said, and I, I talked to one of the neighbors mm-hmm. and they're like, well, we have this, you know, this company that does the mm-hmm. lawn. And for me, it was like, I think it would end up being like $200 a month or something mm-hmm. it came out like every week. And for me, that was like, well, that's a lot of money to pay right. a month. You mm-hmm. know what? It takes me on average about an hour and a half to two mm-hmm. hours a week because I'm weeding. In the hot, nasty sun. <laughs> right, exactly. So yeah, that North Carolina sun during the mm-hmm. summer. So 
I hired this. And mm-hmm. you know what? I felt so liberated mm-hmm. of like, right. I, one, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. if someone else is, is getting uh, mm-hmm. money off this, they're building their business. And for me, I can spend more time mm-hmm. with the family. Right. So it's one of those things where you have to remove like the old, like, mm-hmm. no, I'm going to grind this out because mm-hmm. I saw my father and grandfather, mm-hmm. both are, you know, that type of mentality right. mm-hmm. and just say, you know what? No big deal. Let's, mm-hmm. uh, let's try something mm-hmm. different. And- right. You know, and then allow them to do it. Um, you know, like I, I didn't go back and tell her do this website different. Um, my mother is a, is a famous example of this. She passed away in March, but we had um, hired a housekeeper for her. Lovely young woman came in every two weeks, you know, did, uh, you know, the, the a lot of the stuff that mom just as a, a 91 year old couldn't do. Yeah. But we paid that woman extra to deal with the fact that my mother was going to be on her heels the entire time, just yeah. following her around, um, you know, and, and luckily that young lady never said, I can't do this. Um, yeah. You know, she took it all in stride. She was very good with my mother. Could she have done a better job if she didn't have her shadow? Probably. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, that worked out for everybody and and we didn't have to worry about, you know, her floor wasn't being mopped often enough. Um, but, you know, it's it really is the thing of, you know, when we have somebody else help us, we pick them for their knowledge and their expertise. Mm-hmm. Honor them by letting them do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is why I think business coaches are so important. You know, Mm -hmm. I never, I never saw the value until I started working with Rich. Mm -hmm. Um, And really he's been, I mean, he's been a great friend, Mm -hmm. but he's really helps me more on the psyche, on the Mm -hmm. mindset, on like, you know, thinking again that I can do Mm -hmm. things before I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned you, you know, obviously, you know, you've helped folks, but you had a business coach early on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, we can't do it ourselves. And when we open up, because that, that's the one thing with talking to uh, business owners, they'll go to a therapist, mm-hmm. talk about their personal life and do that. But yet mm-hmm. they're, they they won't go get someone right. to talk to business and mm-hmm. someone that's maybe further ahead that has mm-hmm. done something similar. Mm-hmm. Kind of intriguing to me. Why? Now, maybe mm-hmm. it's because there's a cost there and they but mm-hmm. they didn't see the value. I don't mm-hmm. know. But I don't know if you've experienced that. Maybe why mm-hmm. people don't choose a coach. I, don't know. I think it, it comes back to they don't want to admit that they need help. Um, you know, and, 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 or I can read the books and I can watch the podcasts and, and all of those things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I have a business coach now who I absolutely adore Mm -hmm. and she does that thing that is the, the A in encompass. She holds me accountable Mm -hmm. once a week. I get an email from her. What did you do this week? What are you doing this? What did you do last week? What are you doing this week now? I don't have to answer, but right. it's one of those things where it's just good in my head to go back through and go, oh, okay, I did this and this and this, ooh, still need to finish this on that. Um, and then what am I planning for the week? So that accountability, and and I, I'm, I'll be honest, I don't do that myself, um, you know, and, and having her do that is worth every penny I pay her. Yeah. It's absolutely neat. I mean, I, I see this with CrossFit. It's one of the mm-hmm. athletic standpoint, what mm-hmm. I do mm-hmm. most and the community at CrossFit. Mm-hmm. Right. When you walk in, if I haven't been there in a week mm-hmm. or I've been on vacation or something mm-hmm. like that, like, oh, Brian, where have you been? We haven't mm-hmm. seen. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of that accountability mm-hmm. thing. Ah, we're, you know, what have you been doing? Like, right. are you slacking? Are you, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. but I think we need that in our mm-hmm. lives because not only can we not do it mm-hmm. ourselves, sometimes we think we're doing it, but mm-hmm. we're really not. We're, we're right. kind of escaping in some mm-hmm. way. And that's why I love that idea mm-hmm. of the accountability mirror, mm-hmm. kind of looking in it and, mm-hmm. and giving ourselves really a gut check. Like, mm-hmm. am I doing what I'm saying mm-hmm. I need to be doing? And right. most of the time, you know, we hope we are, but there's a lot mm-hmm. of time we're not. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we need help along the way. Right. We can't do it ourselves. Well, and I found the more detailed I am, the better. Um, so instead of just saying, recorded podcasts. It's recorded this podcast with this person recorded this, you know, I, I just detail it at all because then it really does remind me, oh yeah, I have to do this for this, right. um, you know, and, and some things like that. And, and then I also think, oh, this hasn't been on the list for a while. I better put it back on there. Yeah. Yeah. The accountability is such a big thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if you can get to the point of having more self accountability and having that mm-hmm. 
because it's nice to have people tell you, hey, right. you need this, that, or the mm -hmm. other, or have you considered mm -hmm. this? But really having the discipline to sit mm -hmm. with yourself mm -hmm. and accept that, hey, I'm not doing what I said I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. right. And then show up for yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big step a lot of people could mm -hmm. try to take that they might not be taking. I know mm -hmm. I wasn't taking it for a lot of years. I would mm -hmm. make excuses. Oh, I'll start on Monday mm -hmm. or eh, I'm not good enough to do mm -hmm. that. The, po I mean, the, the the blog post wasn't quite what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I will, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ship it another time. Like mm -hmm. I'll do it something different. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you really start putting your feet to the fire and say, no, no, I said, I'm going to do this. I mm -hmm. love how Kobe, I don't know if you're a Kobe Bryant fan. I was a big Lakers fan and mm -hmm. you know, Kobe Bryant, obviously one of the best players of all time. I love how he has this phrasing of, I don't negotiate with myself. Mm. Meaning, I already made the decision. Mm -hmm. I made the decision that I'm showing up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. say. Right. I'm not, there's no negotiation mm -hmm. that next morning when I'm laying mm -hmm. in bed. I already said I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's just holding ourselves mm -hmm. accountable. Um, mm -hmm. It's nice to have other people do it. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're with ourselves right. all day, every day. Yeah. We need to find a space mm -hmm. where we can do that for ourselves. Right. Yeah. You know, Kathleen never questions me about anything that I say. Well, you know, I take that back. She does. But it's for me more than anything. And so it's just that gentle nudge every Sunday of getting that email and, and then going back through my calendar, my head, you know, my notes, all of those various things. And then, then going forward, um, yeah. you know, and, and the other thing that I have learned, you know, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm years old. Um, I, I do have to-do lists now. And I, and I, again, I get them more detailed um, because I, I don't want to look at it and go, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> you know? um, and, and I love my to-do list because mine makes cute little ping noises when I check stuff off. Right. You know, it's kind of like Pavlov's dog. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it is something because again, it's that accountability. I need to do this, 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 and this and cool. Then it's done. All right. And that goes back to, this is, this is how this all works together as we're focusing on the compass. Mm -hmm. here. It's like, if I have an objective mm -hmm. and this is the path I want to mm -hmm. go down, well, the accountability is all just to make sure I'm on track. It's like mm -hmm. the bumpers on the bowling alley, mm -hmm. right? I'm just right. kind of going down the path. Mm -hmm. I just have to make sure I don't veer off. And mm -hmm. accountability is just a way that mm -hmm. it allows me to check those mm -hmm. boxes. As you're saying, right. do this, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything grandiose or over the top. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a, a self check in. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you have the coaches to help mm -hmm. guide you as well, um, I, I think it's so important to mm -hmm. help us make sure we don't get off track. Because mm -hmm. by the way, we will miss. We're mm -hmm. going to miss the gym some days. Right. Things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Life happens. Mm -hmm. But as James Clear says, like missing one day is fine. It's when mm -hmm. you start missing and day two goes mm -hmm. in and further right. from there. That's mm -hmm. how our habits start mm -hmm. to shift into right. more negative. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, and you do have to take things into account. Um, I had surgery a couple of weeks ago and surgery went well, but it took me longer to start feeling better again. Um, and that annoyed me to no end, but I also knew I've got to get through this. Um, and so then I just gently pushed things off and gave myself the grace to go, okay, you know, it's okay. I need to, to just take another day off. Um, but then it does, you, but you're right. There is that point where it's like, get your lazy, you know, what up off the ground, um, and get back to doing it. Even if you're just doing part of it or some of it, um, you know, or, or, you know, you do it halfway because it does get real easy to not do it. Well, and I, th this is why I'm such a big believer in consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency can show up in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. but it's how do we continue to put a daily effort? It can mm -hmm. be a micro small right. dose mm -hmm. of it. It doesn't have to be this massive thing, mm -hmm. but if you look at anyone that is doing anything of brilliance or anything where they would quote unquote be successful, someone mm -hmm. might consider them. They've been doing it for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Through ups and downs, through mm -hmm. the hurdles, the good times and bad, they've mm -hmm. been doing it, right? Just like your podcast, you mm -hmm. don't get to a thousand without doing one mm -hmm. at a time mm -hmm. over a long period right. of time, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. I, 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 Cause I'm at around like 450 or so. Mm -hmm. Cool. Number. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you, you got a, I got a good chunk. I got a long way to go to get to a thousand, but the, the reason I bring that up, cause I have a lot of folks that are like young podcasters mm -hmm. I'll talk with them. Right. Like, You've done that many. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, but I was where you were. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. kept going. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people that do, you know, 
three episodes or six mm-hmm. episodes and then they quit. And that's fine. I think the master number is 34 for some that, reason. If you get past that, you're probably going to be okay. I have no idea where that number comes from. It, 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 and at the end of the day, like as long as you quit for a good reason, mm-hmm. like right. maybe like I always tell people they want to start a podcast. I think 20, that's my number. Mm-hmm. Right. Do 20. Because mm-hmm. 20 is. 20 gives you a pretty good idea if you're going to like it. Right. And it's hard enough mm-hmm. where it's like, you can't just pump out two or three episodes mm-hmm. and touch it. Like right. you really got to do it for mm-hmm. a few months minimum. Mm-hmm. You have to keep the process mm-hmm. rolling. So I, I think that's one of the big things is the consistency. Mm-hmm. And if if you have that discipline mm-hmm. to show up each day, even mm-hmm. in a small capacity, mm-hmm. you're going to be a such a, be- not just a better mm-hmm. person, but like mm-hmm. your business is going to grow mm-hmm. exponentially. Mm-hmm. I, putting in the time. So mm-hmm. look at that. If you're missing, if it's like, oh, I show up once every once in a while, mm-hmm. how do you build that consistency right. every mm-hmm. single day? Mm-hmm. doesn't have to be big, just right. something small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and just think of it, you know, in, in another term, you know, your, uh, you know, would you just show up to your job? Every once in a while, would you just show up for a date every once in a while? Right? No, right. you know, you have to put in that time and that effort to do it. And like we said, you know, there are times where you're going to think, I do not want to do this today. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes you really do need to say no, but sometimes it's not, nah. you know, pick yourself up and go. And it's really funny because usually when you do that, you find it's even better. What do you mean by that? What do you mean? It's like, so, you know, like you're thinking, Ugh, I do not want to go to that networking meeting. I know I'm supposed to go every Monday. I'm supposed to, you know, but I'm sleepy today. I'm lazy today. I got other stuff to do, but I'm going to go anyway. And then that's when the, the perfect person is there, or you really hit it out of the park with your 30 second spiel. I mean, whatever it is, you know, now you don't want to force yourself to do it. Because I think there is kind of that, you know, when yeah. when you're forcing it, we all know. Um, yeah. But it is still, it's like, okay, you know, no, you can get up and, and go and do this. Yeah. Well, I think it comes down to mindset. It's mm-hmm. it's going in there and walking in with, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe I don't feel it, mm-hmm. but I'm going to go in with an open mind. Right. And be right. positive. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a very much of an eternal optimist, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of bad in the world and, mm-hmm. and we, we dealt some bad cards and, mm-hmm. and you know, different parts of our life. But at the end of the day, we're here, we have this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. If you want to take, you know, mm-hmm. kind of hand in our mm-hmm. hands. So I'm just an optimist. So yeah, mm-hmm. going into those conversations, even with like podcast interviews and, and those type of things, it's like, I don't know this person, but mm-hmm. man, I'm excited for this conversation mm-hmm. just to see where it goes. Right. right? That's probably the same way you pop. Mm-hmm. Oh pop, yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, my podcast is not monetized. Could I do that? Yeah. I just don't want to. I mean, yeah. that's the, the, it's not a priority, right? What I get out of it, I get to meet the coolest people and have fabulous conversations. Yeah. You know, out of 996, I think there have been two where when I was done, I went, huh, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I always felt, it's, you know, and, and the, the nice thing is there were really just those two. But with both of those, I thought, what did I not do to prepare better? Right. I I put it back on me Mm -hmm. that there was some reason why it just wasn't quite there. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to remember who said this, but like, if you talk to someone and you're like, God, they're, they're not interesting at all. Mm-hmm. It's you're not curious enough. You're not mm-hmm. asking the right questions because right. everyone's, mm-hmm. everyone's interesting in mm-hmm. their own way. They have right. some story. Mm-hmm. It's have you pulled it out. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I think it's, I, I don't monetize mine either. Mm-hmm. And the similar, similar reason mm-hmm. is I like it from a networking side mm-hmm. of like, there's a mm-hmm. phenomenal people I've never would have met. Right. I also like it from the, going back to the whole, just get started mission. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a proving ground that, mm-hmm small steps over a long period mm-hmm. of time is what continues to build mm-hmm. a successful life. Right. And that's mm-hmm. one of the reasons I continue to do it because mm-hmm. I love doing it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like an MBA mm-hmm. every, you know, mm-hmm. every podcast. Right. Episode, I know, you know, yeah. but so, yeah, it's, it's, I, I think folks should, should really think about that when they are with the consistency mm-hmm. that you put into play and having a good mm-hmm. mindset when you're, when you're not mm-hmm. really feeling it, mm-hmm. it's okay. It's just one time. Cause you'll probably mm-hmm. feel good tomorrow. Right. Right. You know, there's a, a meme that floats around on, on social, you know, fairly often that I see, and it's two ladders leaned up against a wall and it's, uh, you know, cartoon yeah. and the, the ladders and the height are the exact same distance. Yeah. One has twice as many rungs in it. Hmm. So it is much easier to take those small steps to get to the top. And the other guy can't even reach the first rung. 
because mm-hmm. the step is just too far away. And that is kind of that just get started. You know, what is that first little step that yeah. you can take? And sometimes it's just telling somebody, hey, I'm going to do this. Um, you know, but whatever it is, you have to take that first little step. Yeah. And, and it's going to be different for everyone. And mm-hmm. it, it might be different stuff. Again, it might be, mm-hmm. Hey, I have, I have a great job and everything else is going mm-hmm. well, but man, I really want to start this hobby, mm-hmm. do something right. Mm-hmm. It might be like you did 30 years mm-hmm. ago. Like, God, I have this job, mm-hmm. but man, I want to start this business. Mm-hmm. It could be a variety. It might just right. be like, I want to be a better parent to my mm-hmm. kid or right. a better spouse to, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. whatever it's we going back to, we have to make that commitment. Mm-hmm. That's the only way. Cause by the, by the way, what we're not talking about, which everyone experiences, once you start, I don't think starting is the hardest part. No, it's keeping hardest, going. Well, and I actually think the hardest part, mm-hmm. I'm I'm experiencing this with my son and with his band, he plays trumpet, mm-hmm. it's, it's the plateau. It's the, ah. first, it's the first time mm-hmm. you hit mm-hmm. that hard. Because again, mm-hmm. oh, well, let's do our podcast. Yeah, the first few episodes is awesome. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, Oh, I gotta grind out, or I gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta reach out to get new guests, or whatever mm-hmm. it is. You hit that plateau, mm-hmm. and it's like, God, this is really challenging. Mm-hmm. Once you overcome that, mm-hmm. and this is this is kind of part of my story of how I've got to where I, you know, where I am today. Mm-hmm. It's I had zero confidence years ago, and the reason I'm so confident today is I just kept coming up to those plateaus, mm-hmm. those hurdles, mm-hmm. and I somehow managed to get over them. Mm-hmm. And then I got over the next one. And when I look mm-hmm. back, I realize like, oh, I actually did stuff I didn't think I was right. capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Why can't I do this? Mm-hmm. And that's why like on my mirror in my bathroom, I have this uh, phrase, this question is why can't it be you? Mm-hmm. And this is something that for the last few years, I've really asked myself, why can't it be you? So when I'm like, oh, I don't think I should write that book or I don't mm-hmm. think I should do this, that or the other. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why can't it be you? Why right. can't you be why the not? One that does it? Mm-hmm. And that helped me kind of push forward and get over that next mm-hmm. hurdle. So mm-hmm. if you recognize though, hey, when I start, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a lot of excitement up front. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be jacked up and I'm gonna wanna mm-hmm. do it. And then I know I'm gonna hit a wall that mm-hmm. some day one, day 10, right. day whatever it is, just know that that's gonna exist mm-hmm. and then work mm-hmm. toward going back to right. what you did. Remember, I'm not gonna negotiate myself. Mm-hmm. This is the commitment I made. Mm-hmm. This is the objective I had. I'm mm-hmm. going to keep moving forward, even mm-hmm. though it's going to suck for a little mm-hmm. bit. Right. That's how you keep moving. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and a lot of what we've been talking about is that first S, which is support, right? Mm-hmm. What are those things and people who are going to help you keep doing all of this? Um, right. You know, and and I think that's, again, one of the important things. We're, we're not in it alone. Uh, you know, I remember long enough ago that we didn't have the internet. Yeah. We still got a lot of work done, <laughs> right? Yeah. We still, we had phones where they were attached to a wall, um, you know, and, and you could get four feet away or, you know, you might buy a, a fancy cord, but you weren't getting too far away from it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so it's, it's just kind of, you know, you, what you have now is the situation you have now, take it and go. Um, you know, if we would have said, no, we're going to wait until Al Gore invents the internet, Right. We wouldn't, you know, our business would have folded. Right. But, um, but yeah, it's, what do you need that is, is that you have right now to, to do it and, you know, and, and it's okay again, to go out and get those things and find people who can support you. You know, it's, it, it is not in any way diminishing yourself. In fact, to me, it makes you even stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I don't think much has changed in, you know, again, I'm 41. So I was growing mm-hmm. up in the late eighties, you know, nineties. Mm-hmm. And I ha- I remember the phones that uh, attached to the wall and the mm-hmm. rotary phones and all that, but I don't think much has changed in the way of support. Right. And so I look at it in two. The two same ways. basics are always there. The same basics, right. Mm-hmm. Is, and, and I look at it in two ways. So let's take our our, we'll call our network, our people mm-hmm. that are in our sphere that we know. Mm-hmm. The whole idea of like, we are the average of the five people mm-hmm. we spend the most. Right. And I mm-hmm. firmly believe that. Mm-hmm. But it's the same as it was 50 years ago, right? Mm-hmm. right? Uh, am I sitting around gossiping with friends mm-hmm. and being negative? Or mm-hmm. am I going out and right. spending time with people, mm-hmm. maybe going to business seminars? Mm-hmm. Whatever? It's the same thing today, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, who am I spending time? Am I mm-hmm. you know, watching the news mm-hmm. all day, every day and, and just having this like suck the life out of me? Mm-hmm. 
or am I doing other things? So mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of opportunity here. So I would encourage people to look on two fronts. One is who are you spending time with in mm -hmm. person? And mm -hmm. by the way, if you're not spending time with people in person, mm -hmm. if you're having a lot of virtual coffees mm -hmm. and stuff, you need to get your butt out of the house and go. Yeah, find I need to. I, that's one of the things because I have not been networking yeah. a lot yeah. since COVID. Um, and you know, and and did I lose business? No, probably not. Or I would have gone back to doing it sooner. But just the the aspects of going and being social, yeah. and you know that is is definitely a benefit. Yeah, the personal connections. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, because we now have this wide open mm -hmm. world where I think it's great. The fact that you and I we probably mm -hmm. never have met if it wasn't for this. Right. So mm -hmm. I think I'm not I'm not uh, saying don't do mm -hmm. virtual stuff, but I think mm -hmm. you can get out in your own mm -hmm. area where mm -hmm. you live and find right. people. The other thing, and I think it's probably could be more impactful mm -hmm. is what I call virtual mentors. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, and this is kind of, you know, I think about it now podcasting, but like one of the things that inspired me, I won't go into the whole story of like mm -hmm. you know, starting the podcast and let you, unless you want me to, but I used to watch with my grandmother. I used to watch like Regis and Kathy Lee. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, so I like love watching mm -hmm. like Oprah right. back and the, those, interactions, right? those interactions, right? Interactions, the mm -hmm. interviews and those type of things. I mm -hmm. love watching that. And there are feel good stories, a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I learned a lot about communication mm -hmm. there. Um, but nowadays I spend a lot of time online mm -hmm. following people that are solopreneurs, people mm -hmm. trying to start businesses, mm -hmm. again, whether it's around marketing or other mm -hmm. stuff, like and really learning mm -hmm. and kind of bring in. I could easily spend just as much time scrolling Instagram, mm -hmm. doom scrolling, doing mm -hmm. all that. So not only the people in person that you're meeting, but I would encourage everyone to look at how much time are you spending mm -hmm. right. in those virtual circles mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. who are those people? Because mm -hmm. that could be a, a positive for your life, but also mm -hmm. it can be a detriment. Right. Um, and, we, and we have the opportunity to make that choice mm -hmm. wherever we want to go. Mm -hmm. Right. And that comes back to priorities and boundaries and, and all of those things. You know, I do not have a TikTok account. I don't think I could get into my Instagram account. Um, right. And part of that is because, like I said, squirrel, right? You know, I it, I don't always have the the self-control to, to say, hey, you know, I'm only going to do this for 10 minutes because it's real easy to click that next button, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so for me, it's just remove that temptation. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and the the amazing thing is my world is still going around, um, you know, and, and, um, but yeah, it's, it, it really is just kind of those things where if you figure out what you need and what you don't need, and then you go forward. Yeah. And we're at that point now, as we're recording this, right. In the next handful of months, mm -hmm. right. In the U S we are going to get littered with political talk. Yikes. Right? Mm -hmm. Great. If you want to watch that mm -hmm. and you want to get sucked into that, but those hours that you're, mm -hmm. what I believe are wasting mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. could be put into your family life, your business, right. your health, like mm -hmm. all the other aspects. You could sleep. You could sleep right? <laughs> all these other things that we take for granted mm -hmm. because of why, because we mm -hmm. care about who's going to be president. Mm -hmm. Sure. That matters a little, but as we mm -hmm. know, right, there's a lot of underlying mm -hmm. stuff besides just who's at the helm. So mm -hmm. you can waste time and energy on that, mm -hmm. or we can spend it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's just a choice you make mm -hmm. every day. And that, that goes right. back to showing up for yourself mm -hmm. and being consistent with it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, we only have five minutes left. This time has just flown by. This yes. has been, been wonderful. But we have one more S. So the start in compass. So tell us just a little bit more about that. And then tell us how you can help folks do this. Yeah. Well, this, the start in compass is really that action because mm -hmm. all the other stuff, as we mentioned before, you're trying to put this in place, right? I got to make a commitment. I got to have my objective. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's about taking action. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I don't care how much you plan. If you don't do the thing, you're never, you're not doing mm -hmm. the thing. Mm -hmm. So, and the start is really whatever you want mm -hmm. to do. What I encourage folks is I like to, because I like to, again, go the simplest. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just take one day, though. I encourage people, and this is a challenge maybe um, I can get everyone, is I want you to take seven days. That's it. Okay. Not a year. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care about a year. If, mm -hmm. By the way, if you can't do something for seven days, forget about doing it You know, at another point. Right. You're not going to be able to do it longer. Right. So take seven days mm -hmm. and whatever you decide to do. So again, let's mm -hmm. use the fitness analogy mm -hmm. as the example to say, okay, I want to lose 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. I want you just to plot out the next seven days. Mm -hmm. 
what what is that going to look like, mm-hmm. right? What are you going to eat? Mm-hmm. Are you going to go to the gym? Are you going to walk mm-hmm. around the block? How much time are you going to mm-hmm. dedicate? And by the way, this is looking at your calendar. We mm-hmm. talk about if you say, you know what, I really only have mm-hmm. 30 minutes a day to dedicate mm-hmm. to fitness, let's say. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are you going to do right. in those 30 minutes? I don't, mm-hmm. it's great to say you have 30 minutes if you're just going to sit in a couch that does nothing. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? And just mm-hmm. kind of plot, plot out the simplest way to start. Mm-hmm. It might be, I'm going to walk around the block for 15 minutes, mm-hmm. listen to podcasts for the next seven days. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Right. So start looking at a couple areas there Mm -hmm. and just move the ball forward slightly. Mm -hmm. And then what I really want you to do is after day seven is sit and think back of the last week Mm -hmm. and ask yourself a couple of questions. One is, did I accomplish that? Like, Uh be Mm -hmm. honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. But then is this something I really want to keep up going Mm -hmm. forward? Right. And if the answer is yes, like let's Mm -hmm. say it's a business idea and you kind of noodle on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I have to start mapping out my objective Mm -hmm. a little bit longer out. What Mm -hmm. is the next week or set, you know, Mm -hmm. 30 days or whatever it is and start putting that forward. Mm -hmm. That's obviously a longer discussion and Mm -hmm. process, but that's a simple thing you can Mm -hmm. start with and have a conversation Mm -hmm. internally Mm -hmm. and then plot the path forward. Mm -hmm. It's simple, just not easy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That getting started truly is the absolute hardest part about all of this. Yeah, you have to take that first step. And Mm -hmm. then, as we've mentioned before, once you get that first brush of, Mm -hmm. you know, the fire, you just Mm got to make sure to go for it. Mm -hmm. Because by the way, the gap between, you know, what's comfortable and what's uncomfortable, that Mm -hmm. discomfort gap, Mm -hmm. actually a sliver. Right. I think it's like the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. It's actually Mm -hmm. really small. Mm -hmm. So once you get past that, Mm -hmm. which doesn't take that more, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this Mm -hmm. wasn't that hard. Right. Why did Mm -hmm. I worry about this? I did it. What Mm -hmm. can I do next? Mm -hmm. And mm-hmm. that's what's that's what propels us forward. That's mm-hmm. what propelled me forward. Mm-hmm. It's keeping it that simple. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Well, Brian, I'm sure people are saying, I need this. So tell us how they find you and what are the services that you provide? Yeah, so my website's probably the easiest. It's my it's my name, Brianondraco.com. So B-R-I-A-N-O-N-D-R-A-K-O.com. Um, I also have my which I'm talking about website earlier, I'm just getting up. It probably be up by the time this launches, but it's sales.brianondraco.com, ah. which is sales mentorship. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of two front, right? Mm-hmm. I have my, I'll kind of call it my content um, avenue, which is the mm-hmm. longer play. It's the podcast. It's you know, my third children's book is launching in October. Um, you know, I do some personal coaching mm-hmm. with folks on the compass framework and other mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. That's one avenue. And then the other avenue, something I've really been focused on, it's a mix of my love for entrepreneurship and my skill of sales, mm-hmm. you know, I go back my software sales background and I help founder led sales teams. So think of small entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. small cool. businesses, mm-hmm. big businesses, um, learn how to sell because mm-hmm. most of the, they don't bring in revenue. The no, door don't... because Ooh, sales is an icky word. It's it, it can be a very icky word, although it doesn't have to be. So I really mm-hmm. help mentor folks, mm-hmm. uh, to, to grow their sales. And that's something I, I absolutely love doing. So both of those areas, mm-hmm. uh, and and if you just want to say, hey Brian, I enjoyed the discussion here. Mm-hmm. I want to you know follow you l- more. LinkedIn mm-hmm. is probably the best spot. Okay. On Twitter, you know, mm-hmm. X a little more, mm-hmm. and then subscribe to my blog. That's mm-hmm. probably the best. I blog three times mm-hmm. a week, just kind of micro blogs, just mm-hmm. my thoughts on the world. I love it. I love it. Well, this really has been so much fun, and we still have stuff to talk about. So you know, we'll we'll have you back on at some point. But you know, it this has been so fabulous. You know, because we have talked a lot about you know, just how to get started. The hardest thing out of, out of all of this, but until we have you on again, Brian, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Well, I I think it's probably a culmination of what we talked about. It's, it's really having an honest conversation with yourself. I found through my experience and talking with a lot of others, most folks have a hard time sitting just even for 10 minutes without the podcast on, without the music on, with, without the game on and sitting and really thinking about what they want. You know, we get to ask that question all the time is like, oh, are you, you know, does this person successful or are you successful? Well, most of the time we haven't defined what success is for ourselves. So maybe as an action item on top of the seven day thing um, for everyone is why don't you define success for yourself? What does that look like? Because if you define success and what that means, what are the parameters around it? It's going to make your job search better. It's going to make the way you show up for your family better, your health, all of those different kind of dominoes 
are much easier because now you have the compass pointing in the right direction. If we're just like, what is success? Is it, if it's just like money or something like that? Well, that's, that's very arbitrary. I want to get really specific on what success is for me. And now I can move forward in the right direction. So that would be an action item. Put 30 minutes on your calendar, literally block everything out, put your phone on, do not disturb, put it in another room, get a pen and a piece of paper and just think and see what you come up with. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I have been having so much fun talking with Brian Andreco. I'm Deb Creer. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.